Okay. And of course, this side over here mirrors this side here, with this dimension being 26, and this dimension here being 34. Okay. Now the top. Now, I ended up using this as 17 inches. That was wide enough to support the lighting kit that I bought. So the top ended up being 26 inches this way and 17 inches this way. Okay? And these were 45 degree angles right here. Easy to cut out with a carpenter square. You can buy the kind that have 45 degree angles in them, so it was really easy just to figure out what that was and cut it. Okay? So that's the basic design behind this thing. I also failed to mention this in the earlier part, but electrical. I'm putting a three-way switch on the front of the box. Okay? The reason three-way switch. One switch for the fan, one switch for the light, one switch for accessories like the air compressor on the airbrush. That way I have independent control over all three. Okay? On the side, I'm going to put a plug that's controlled by a switch where I'm going to plug the air compressor. That way I can cut, have a plug separate from the wall plugs. I have a plug on the spray booth for the airbrush. Okay? Um, I'm also going to seal up the air chamber so that we do not have leaking air. What, the reason for this is I want the air going through the furnace filter and then out the back. I don't want it coming in the sides. So I've got some silicone caulk to seal that up with. Okay? And also, I can use the silicone caulk to completely cover my electronics so that there is zero chance of that sparking. Okay? And seal my um, plugs and my switches out of the airflow can't do that with the motor unfortunately I'm gonna to have to replace that motor before too long but that's easy enough to do the way I designed this okay so here's the basic design prints uh, behind this thing one thing the next thing you should do and here here's my early sketches on this so I did sketch this out before I went out and bought things and here we have a layout where I'm trying to figure out how to get this all on one sheet of plywood. Turned out it didn't fit on one sheet. I went a little too big with this thing. So I could not get all of it on one sheet of plywood. I had to use two sheets of plywood. That didn't bother me too much because I needed a 55 inch by 30 inch sheet of plywood for a different project. And between that project and this project, we ate up most of the plywood. I have enough left over, I could make about five or ten model bases real easily. Just buy some molding at the home improvement store and put it around the plywood base. And I have a good display base for about anything I want to build now because I got enough plywood left over for that. I also have some I also bought a four by eight sheet of pegboard, mainly because I'm putting the pegboard along this back wall back here and I'm putting it across the bottom here. Now, the pegboard is going to be 25 by 25 for the bottom. Okay? On the back wall, the width of it is 25, but the height of it I played by ear. In fact, I couldn't tell you how, how tall it is unless I go get a ruler and measure it. The reason for that is I did not know where I was going to put the light kit and how big the light kit was going to be, okay? So I played the height of that by ear, just like I played where I cut this by ear. When I, you know, the notch right here on the side of the tooth. Played that by ear too. Okay, so that pretty much goes through the whole design process. The next step was to run to the store and buy things. Um, I will post the parts list in the little gobbledygook that goes underneath the videos between the video and the comments. I will post all the parts I bought there. Two sheets of plywood, bathroom fan, 
switches, light kit, wires, and all that stuff. Uh, I think this thing came out to cost me about $100, $150, which is pretty good because the commercial spray booth usually is on Amazon.com. The cheapest one I could find was $250. So I'm still coming out ahead, and this thing's much larger than the cheapest spray booth I could find. Okay, plus it has features that that one doesn't have. So I think all in all, it is worthwhile making a good hobby spray booth. Okay, just gonna need a little bit of carpentry skills. I'm not a carpenter. You will see this in the videos of construction. I did not film every single cut on this thing. I did not film every single screw I put in, but I did outline what I was doing. So, in future videos, you'll get to see all that. That's pretty much it for now. Um, I don't remember the order I videotape things in. I'm not quite done with the spray booth just yet. So, these videos will come up over the next day or two. That's it for now. Okay, I'm about to start on the first part of this. Here's the tools I'm gonna to use to cut the wood to size. I already had some of the wood cut at my local home improvement store. It, this is Texas in the summertime. I don't know if you can see that on my phone, but it says 105 degrees out here. Not really because of that. That is headed my way. I'm going to have a lot of fun building this thing today because of that rain. That's not making me very happy. Well, it is because the yard needs the rain. But anyhow, I'll get started on this pretty soon. I'll get as much done as I can. Hopefully I can show you how I do cutting to size of the lumber with these tools. Back in a sec. Okay, here's my setup for cutting the board. Um, Right here, I have a pretty long level clamped to the board. There is masking tape covering my cut line. The reason for the masking tape is it will keep the board from fraying as I cut it. It'll help keep the finish of the board intact. Um, I'm using two tables to support my cut piece. I have a lot of these tables at my office, so. It's not a big deal that I have them, and since I own the business, no one's going to complain that I took them. If they do, well, they're just complaining to a deaf ear. Um, now, I measured exactly how far over from the cut line to put this brace on my saw. I'm about to find out how good of a job I do, because I'm about to cut this thing. Back in a minute, show you the results. I want to show you guys why you should tape the edges of your work as you cut it. Look how nasty and jagged that came out. It just shredded the nice birch veneer on this plywood. Oh well, I can put that on the inside where no one will see it at the bottom, inside the box for the blower fan. But just let that be a lesson learned. Use tape when you're cutting. Okay, I just learned something. I was cutting this board. This is going to be the front of the spray booth. It's a little taller right now than I want it, but the width is precisely 25 inches wide. This is supposed to be a 25 by 25 filter. And when I put it down on here and line up one edge perfectly with the board, we have an overhang. It's wider along here. Turns out the filters are not 25 by 25. They're a little bit smaller than 25. That way you can make the whole 25 by 25 filter just drops down in there. My problem is I measured the width of the back to be exactly the same width as the filter. So the front and back, I didn't measure the width of the back. I used the filter to measure the width. So the front and back aren't the same width. I now have to go trim the front down to match the back or this thing will not be square as I put it together. Little, little fun tidbit for anyone who's deciding to build their own filter. I mean spray booth. I don't think it's really a problem if I would actually measured it out to be 25 by 25 inside there. Filter would drop in and out real easily and not fit incredibly snug. You could use some weather stripping to get it to fit snug. But just again a little bit of information for everyone to know. I gotta go cut trim down the front to get it to fit right. Back in a bit.